Isana Castilla is a beautiful young woman who is the daughter of a noble and also a witch. That is why she is captured by a baron named Marcel Barbosa, who is just a young and spoilt brat who plans to threaten the girl using this and make her his wife, because he has always wanted her. But the girl in chains is not actually Isana, as her name is Yi Sana, and she was an ordinary Korean college girl who got transported to this world three days ago and found herself in the body of a woman arrested on suspicion of being a witch. She kicks him in the jaw as he asks her to kiss his hand, and the soldiers rush into the cell, only to find that their master's face is under the foot of the witch, and she threatens to crush it if they do not obey her. She has been starving in the cell for the past three days, and now she bosses the soldiers to bring her food as she asks Marcel for the key to her cuffs. And as she frees herself, she remembers that she was returning home from her part-time job when she suddenly found herself in this world. Then the guards in this world captured her, despite her struggle, and now she was going to be executed in an hour if she did not escape. So as the soldiers are away, she uses a baton and a piece of cloth to break the window grill and jumps down, thinking that the trees might break her fall and that it was still better than being burned to death. She gathers her courage and jumps, only to land on the face of the crown prince of the Titan Empire. Sana is shocked, and she runs away, panicking that she must hide or the prince will get her executed for sure. And indeed, he chases after her on horseback and casually picks her up as he asks her what she was guilty of. The prince Ludwig Titan, known by his close people as Louis, takes her to her trial, where the crowd chants to kill her, and he acts as a judge. He asks Marcel to present the case before him, and he says that he witnessed Sana going into the Lunar Henge altar four days ago, gathering the energy of the full moon. He brings more witnesses, but it is clear that they are lying and not even doing it properly. Louis commands her to be executed, saying that even if she wasn't a witch, she had harmed the imperial family, and Sana is so furious that she curses him to be hit by lightning. At that very moment, a lightning bolt falls right in front of the prince, who is stunned for a moment, but he starts laughing as it rains and asks Sana if she did that. She is scared, and the prince takes her with him through the forest road as his prisoner and refuses to let his guards do that for him. As she tries to tell the prince that she is not a witch, she falls in a puddle and gets a chance to clean herself in the nearby stream. She complains that first she was in a pervert's prison, and now she was going to the imperial prison when she was so beautiful that she should at least be a princess. As the soldiers watching her turn to give her a little privacy while she changes into the prince's spare clothes, she screams, leaving behind her dress. Everyone thinks that either she was swept by the stream or was hiding, and the second option is the truth. She climbs up a tree, finds a guard, and knocks him down with a kick. Then she picks up his sword and threatens him, but then Louis suddenly points his glowing sword at her and asks her what she wants to talk about. Sana is startled and attacks him, but he disarms her, and now she is afraid that she will die at the hands of the prince, but instead, he just picks her up and makes her sit on his horse. Sana is shocked and curious about what he wanted, but as he asks her if she would prefer to wake instead, she gets silent. She thinks that even though Louis was good-looking, he was trash, and if she cannot escape, she will at least taste the food of the imperial prison before dying. But then the prince and his entourage come to a quiet place in the forest, and he tells her to hold him with everything she has, stunned and wonders if he was trying to make a move on her. But in fact, they were being attacked, and the prince dodged the arrow shot at him before commanding his soldiers to fight back. She instinctively hugs Louis, and as the assassins are overwhelmed, they use a smoke bomb and escape. And by the time the prince clears the smoke using his magical holy sword, the assassins have run away, but giant boulders are about to fall on his head. Fortunately, he and Sana are safe, and since he was shielding her by being on top of her, she is annoyed. 
but they are cut off from the other soldiers, and not even his horse is with him, so he decides to pass through the Castilla estate instead of their regular route. Sana is surprised and wonders if the Castilla family is the same as hers, and then Louis holds her and pulls her along because he does not trust her. She wonders if she should tell him the truth, but he won't believe her, and she finds it beneath her to act pathetic that her memories have been wiped out. But then suddenly, Louis begins to tremble and pant because he was grazed by a poisoned arrow, and he collapses. Meanwhile, in his palace, Marcel is furious and worried because the assassins he sent after the crown prince failed. And at this rate, he was going to get in trouble with his father. But more than that, he is furious that Isana escaped him and says that only if he could light her on fire, she would have understood that he was serious and married him. And now he wants her back. In the forest, Sana has tried her best to stop the flow of poison in Louis's body, and now she tries to heal him with some plants that looked like medicinal herbs from Earth. Her grandpa taught her about them, and she gets sentimental thinking about him, but then she notices the prince's sword and uses it to hunt some fish, and then gathers some wild fruits to eat. She finds that Louis's fever is down, and now he will recover just by resting. But then the night comes, and she wants to create a fire so that they can survive, and she is not aware of the wolf that roams in the forest after dark. So she rubs two pieces of wood to create a spark, but is shocked when a bright and vibrant fire suddenly erupts out of nowhere. Santa looks at the fire circle surrounding her, and though she is initially thankful for it, she realizes that she is going to be burned to death at this rate. But then the fire suddenly starts to fade, and she hears the sound of some people talking nearby. They were out to bring the witch the Baron was obsessing over, and a wolf was stopping them. One man says that the witch was quite beautiful, and he might teach her a naughty lesson if he found her. Sana is irritated and angry, and she hopes that the wolf bites the man's buttocks, and surprisingly, the exact same thing happens. The night passed and as the hunting party ran away, the wolf also headed back to its home. In the morning, the fire completely vanished, but not a single blade of grass was burned. Sana wonders if this really was magic, but she has no time to think because she is feeling sleepy, and she sits next to Louis and falls asleep on his shoulder. He wakes up soon and realizes that the witch has saved his life, and he picks her up and starts walking towards the nearby city. In her dreams, Sana sees her family and pet cat, but they start walking away after greeting her, and she wakes up crying. She realizes that it was a dream and that she is still in her world, and as she looks around, she realizes that she was in a luxurious bedroom. She has many questions. But as she tries to walk, she falls down because she is still feeling weak. And then a girl comes in, and she drops the items she was carrying on seeing her up. The girl is really emotional and cries as she hugs Sana because she was worried about her, and then she rushes to bring her some food, even before Sana can ask her who she is. As she brings the breakfast, the girl introduces herself as Anne, her lady-in-waiting, and tells her that she is the only daughter and sole successor of the Castilla family. She went missing four days ago when she went for a late-night walk, and no one knew anything until she returned. Sana decides to say that she lost all her memories, and when Anne asks her if she did not even remember that the crown prince carried her home in his arms, she coughs out her tea. Sana is not pleased to hear that, but Anne finds it romantic and talks excitedly about how happy and excited she was to see Louis carrying her to her bed. He was surprised to learn that she was a noble, and then left, saying he would send a messenger later. Sana scoffs that the prince changed his tone as he realized that she was nobility, but the best thing is that she escaped the pervert Marcel's prison. She tells Anne that she needs more rest, and as she is alone again, she celebrates becoming a noble from a prisoner and has a good feeling about this new life. But the servants of the household do not share that good feeling, and they are terrified that the cruel Sana is going to cause them great agony soon. Sana is not able to sleep, 
so she decides to go and take a look at the mansion, thinking that even if she were a different person, she still has to act like the owner of the body and learn everything about this world. She steps out of the door and immediately runs into a servant named Sean Bean, who is flustered by seeing her and apologizes, saying that he had seen nothing and asking to be spared. Sana realizes he was panicking because she was still in her sleeping gown, and then Anne comes there and lashes at the poor Sean like a demon before calmly taking Sana inside her room. She thinks that this was an overreaction to something so small, and she thinks that to avoid others getting hurt by this class system, she will have to be more careful. Then Anne brings her some casual clothes, but they are more fancy than the best clothes our protagonist wore in her past life. The maid dressing her is trembling with fear, and then as she goes to take a tour with her lady in waiting, Sana sees the disciplined servants, elegant decorations, and a portrait of the real Isana. She learns that she was only 19 years old, and though she was mature and composed, she was also as cold as ice, and if Sana had not lied about losing her memory, she would have been caught instantly. Seeing her look at the portrait like she is looking at a stranger, Anne believes that she has lost her memory. She assures her that she knows everything about her and will help her get back on her feet. She says that Isana was adopted by her uncle, Count Kane, ten years ago, when she lost her parents in a fire, and he always treated her as his own daughter. Anne shows Sana the portrait of the Count, saying that while he is not good at articulating his emotions, he loves his adopted daughter the most and often spoils her with extravagant gifts. He was currently fighting enemies on the southern border on the orders of the emperor and was about to come back after finishing his mission. Sana says that Kane is in for a surprise when he returns, and then she smiles as she asks Anne to help her out with everything she needs to know. And though the girl is shocked initially, she is happy to help. The first thing she tells Sana is that she loves to read books, but moments after opening the first one, she has a headache because she does not understand the script. Then Anne tells her that she loves to collect gemstones, and seeing so many sparkling gems in front of her, Sana thinks this is more like it. She is inspecting the pretty gems when Anne tells her that she used to take her gems to the garden in the middle of the night, despite her weak constitution, because she said they looked more beautiful under moonlight. Sana thinks about what Marcel said when he was trying to frame her about her absorbing moonlight, but now she realizes that not all of it was false. She realizes that she is a real witch and wonders if Anne knows about it, but she does not want to invite trouble by asking about it and decides to go back to her room. Then she notices a white rose among all the red ones, and though she likes it, Anne panics thinking this was Sean Bean's mistake again. She is visibly shaken and says that she will take care of it, and Sana will have no problems with the dinner. It is true, and after Sana enjoys a great dinner, she wants to go out to the garden, and Anne fidgets as she says she will make all the preparations as usual. And then she goes out in the garden with a whip, preparing to do something dangerous for her lady. As Sana is trying to get a clue about magic from the gemstones and moonlight, she hears the loud screaming sounds of people in the garden. She has no idea that Anne was whipping the servants, and Sean Bean was standing in front of her, protecting the other servants, and requesting that she stop, as it was enough. She says that while others were going to be punished mildly, she was going to beat him to the bone of his life because his mistakes were severe and as she tries to whip him again, Sana catches it and demands that she explain what she was trying to do. Anne flinches as she sees Sana's hand bleeding, and before she can say anything, Sana orders her to take the people back to the mansion and treat them before coming to her room. Inside her room, our protagonist is panicking about what just happened, and she fears that unless Anne is a psycho, it was Isana who put her up to this task. But then Anne comes in, and Sana puts on a poker face as she asks her what was in the bag she was carrying. Anne says that it contained some items she had given her to use for the punishment of the servants, and as Sana sees handcuffs and whips in that, 
she wonders if Asana was into domination. She is flustered but manages to act calm, and she orders Anne to burn all those things and never do it again. But she says that she cannot stop and has to do it for her lady. And as Sana says that she no longer finds pleasure in these things, Anne cries, saying that she needed it because she was the witch of pain. Meanwhile, in the Imperial Palace, Louis has murdered a bunch of people. And as he is sitting on the throne, he says that this is probably just the beginning of things. It had been three years since his father named him the heir to the throne, and during that period he was targeted by assassins numerous times, and today was no exception. He had killed all those assassins, and thinks that the biggest suspect was Duke Barbosa. Louis had returned to the capital upon learning about his father's death, but he was greeted by an attempt on his life. And he thinks that, at this rate, having the holy sword Astrada is not enough, and he needs the witch. Witches were beings between gods and humans with strange magical powers that bowed neither to God nor kings, and Sana is the witch of pain, as Anne tells her. She absorbs others' pain to increase her power, but now Sana does not want it, and Anne says that it was the only thing that was sustaining her. Otherwise, she would be constantly ill. Sana decides to change her friend's notion by displaying her martial arts, as she was also born with a weak constitution in her world. And to compensate for that, she learned all kinds of martial arts. She says that she no longer needs other people's pain to sustain herself, and has been quite well ever since she returned. But since Anne is still anxious, Sana tells her to stop the torture for one week to see if she really falls ill this time. After one week, Sana is still healthy, and the servants can only gossip about how she has stopped the punishments and overlooked their small mistakes. They think that she might have been possessed, but they hope she stays like this forever. Anne honors the deal and burns all the torture equipment, but then she tells Sana that one steward has been locked in a room for the past three years. And she panics, asking why she only told her that now. She rushes to free him, but as she tries to jump out of the door, she finds Cain there, and now she is jumping into his arms. She is smitten by how handsome he is, and as he asks her if she is all right, she does not know what to call him, so she calls him Dad. Cain is left speechless and hugs her as Sana realizes her mistake. He says that she has finally accepted him as her father, and he could not be happier about it. Sana is shocked, and she remains awkward even as they sit together to have tea. Anne told her late that she has never called Cain father in her life, and she learned that he was called the Hidden Sword of the Palace, and often left on long missions by the order of the emperor, but always returned with gifts for her. But she never accepted his love and thought of him as nothing more than a patron. Sana has concluded that they are a dysfunctional family, and to break the awkwardness between them, she starts to talk about what she called him earlier, and he replies that she can call him whatever she likes. She settles on calling him dad and says that he returned earlier than expected, and he tells her that the emperor had recently died, and now Louis was going to be crowned as the new emperor, and he came back to prepare for the coronation. Sana is shocked as she remembers the good-looking trash and says that she will not be going. Both Cain and she are adamant, and then he asks her where her steward Leif was. Sana was about to free him, but now she wonders how it will go as Cain sends his attendant to bring Leif to him. He comes to report to the Count, and Sana is intrigued by his silver hair and eye patch. Cain asks him where he was and he covers for Sana, saying that he was feeling unwell, and she allowed him to rest. But as the Count orders him to get Sana ready for the coronation banquet, he stares coldly at her and asks her to come with him. She wants to object, but hears Leif's voice in her head, threatening to expose her if she does not follow him. Sana wonders if it was telepathy and decides to follow him, but nothing unusual happens. 
Leif says that only three months are left for them to prepare for the coronation, and he commands the servants to prepare an elaborate beauty care routine for Sana, saying she must be bathed with the finest goat milk and wine. She is not having any of it and clearly tells him about it, saying that she will take care of everything and asking him to just bring the catalog of dresses for her. He is not ready to accept it, so Sana decides to change her approach, thanks him for covering for her earlier, and then apologizes for keeping him locked up for three years, smiling as she says it will never happen again. But this flusters Leif a lot, and he pins her to the window as he says that she is not his master and cannot fool him, because he knows that she is just a woman from another world. Sana gets the biggest shock ever, and as she twists her ankle and falls, the eye patch falls on Leif's face, and he transforms into a white wolf, and she recognizes him as the same wolf she saw in the forest. Three years ago, Isana was trying to use magic that transcended time and space, and as Leif objected, she shunned him, saying he was just her familiar. She laughed, saying he might not recognize her the next time they met and then exchanged her soul with the woman who was now pretending to be her. He turns back to himself, saying that he will never acknowledge her as his master and will look out for her body, but Sana grabs him by the collar, asking if it was his master who brought her into this world, and demands to go back to her world right away. Leif is startled, but as Sana pauses to look at him, he blushes, and she is utterly confused by his reaction but then she finds a pen in his pocket and snatches it, threatening to cut her face with it if he does not tell her everything he knows. Leif does not believe her, so Sana shows him her hand that was injured due to catching the whip, and then she thinks that she will really do it because she is desperate enough to do anything to meet her family. But as she thinks that Isana switched souls, she wonders if she is in her body right now, and Leif grabs her hand immediately. They are struggling when Anne comes in running with news and finds the familiar pressing against Sana. And she is so shocked that she hits him with a flower vase. Leif loses consciousness, and despite Sana's wishes, he falls on her. Anne is shocked and says that this must be the reason Sana locked him up for three years. He could not control his feelings for her, and then exploded with them. Thankfully, the girl does not know anything about her being from another world yet, and she decides to find all the information she can from her familiar after he wakes up. She throws him on the bed, but then Kane is looking for her, and as she goes outside, she is shocked to find an imperial convoy at the mansion with gifts sent by the emperor for her. She is as shocked as Cain, and then they receive the message that the new emperor Louis has personally invited Sana to the banquet and given her the honor to choose the first song of the ball. He has written that his gifts were a token of his affection from their memorable exchange the other night, and he will be waiting for her. It is obvious what everyone understood from the message, and Sana, Cain, and the messengers are all petrified as they think that Louis and the princess have already gotten intimate. Cain has always known Louis as a person with more interest in the weeds in his garden than in women, and upon hearing the message, he fears what happened between his daughter and the crown prince. Sana hides the truth with a story about how she found a lost item in a village and returned it to the crown prince, who said that the item had great sentimental value. Cain is relieved, and as he sends Sana to rest, he thinks that his daughter is charming enough to make even Louis fall for her. At night, Sana and Anne are ready to do what they call hunting the dog, and go to Leif, who was dreaming of his master's fragments. But when he wakes up, he finds that his arms and legs have been tied, and his shirt is open. He screams to be let go, and Sana laughs, saying that she has gotten rid of all servants and Anne is guarding the door. She asks him to tell him everything he knows, or she will show him that she is still the Witch of Pain. Her plan is tickling him until he breaks, and it works, and Leif tells her everything he knows, but he has no idea how to fix the situation. He finally decides to forget the past and cooperate with her so that both of them can get what they want. And for that, Leif is ready to play the role of her faithful dog.
With the help of Leif and Anne, Sana began preparing to act like a noble at the coronation banquet, and then finally, the day came when she got to learn about magic. There were two types of magic in the world, sacred and dark. Sacred magic was granted by God in exchange for prayers and mostly got transferred into objects that could only be used by royals. The dark magic was the source of the witch's power, but it did not always come from having a contract with a demon like most people believed. The familiars, like him, got their power from the witch. He decides to show it to her using a demonstration of the technique the witch of the Castilla family, Irina, developed to pass down her powers to her successors in secret. She stored her magic in gems, and as Leif takes out a gem from Sana's collection and kisses it, she asks why he was harassing the poor ruby. But he falls to his knees because his power is not strong enough to activate, and after wiping it, he gives it to Sana to try. Leif asks her to think of her greatest desire as she kisses the ruby, and Sana wishes to go home. But that does not happen. Instead, she gets the ability to read and write the language of this world. Then she also got the magic from other gems and learned to control fire, wind, and lightning. She desired more magic, but to replenish her powers, she needed other people's pain and that was achieved by tormenting Leif by tickling him. Continuing her days like this, it was soon the day of Louis's coronation, and Sana's life was about to become even more incredible. The coronation was a grand success, and at night, even the legendary Blue Moon event called Cellini took place, which only occurs once every hundred years. The Barbosa family was there too, including Duke Barbosa, and he wants his daughter Marlena to charm the new emperor, and she is quite confident in her abilities. Meanwhile, Cain and Sana are running late for the banquet, and he says that they can just greet the emperor and return, using her weak constitution as an excuse. But Sana cannot tell him that the emperor was the problem and she wishes to tell Cain that his daughter was treated like a criminal and almost burned to death by the new emperor. At the party, some girls are talking about how the emperor needs to settle down quickly, and they say that no one is more suitable to be his wife than Marlena, and they are sure that he will fall for her. But then Sana and Cain enter the hall, and everyone's attention shifts towards her beauty. She did not want to be the center of attention and wanted to dress modestly, but due to her family's opposition, she had to wear something fancy. But then she is suddenly taken aback as she sees Marcel there, makes an excuse that she was suffocating inside the hall, and goes to the balcony. She thinks that no one would say anything if she made the excuse that she did not realize the emperor made his appearance and stayed on the balcony. But then Marlena and her friends suddenly approached her. She recognizes the daughter of Barbosa and asks about the other girls, who cling to her as they introduce themselves. Marlena knew Sana as an ordinary and sickly girl who never made her appearance at events after her humble debutante ball. But she suddenly came to the coronation and stole the limelight, and now she is jealous and furious at her. As the two girls hold her, Marlena throws her drink on Sana's face and dress, saying that her hand slipped and either way she was overdressed for her status. As the three girls mock her, Sana is furious, but she knows how to give an answer and calls them three ugly ducklings. She uses her magic to send a strong gust of wind to disguise their look and says that it looked like a bird-made nest on their head. As Sana laughs... She remembers ruling the streets in her home when she was just a child back on Earth. But just as she enters the banquet hall again, the emperor arrives at the party, and now she thinks she can't let the handsome trash see her like this. She plans to find Cain and ask her to take her home. But then Louis spots her, and their eyes meet for a second. Sana decides to ignore that and searches for the count, and as she walks away, she feels like the emperor was following her on purpose which he obviously was. And just as she finds Cain, Louis holds her hand, asking the beautiful girl where she was rushing off to. She is flustered and wants to be freed, but he just pulls her closer, asking her if she forgot that he knows she is the witch.
He threatens to expose her in front of everyone if she does not listen to him, and she fears that they will all turn against her and has no choice but to silently follow the emperor. She thinks that he is even worse than before, and as he kisses her hand, she is grossed out. He asks her to stand by his side tonight, and she wonders why she saved him from the poisoned arrow. The rest of the party doesn't know the truth, and they think that Louis really likes Sana, and the rumors about them being lovers were true, and the ones who are most shocked are Duke Barbosa and his daughter. Louis and Sana dance, and as he asks her why her hand tastes like champagne, she steps on his foot and tells him to shut up and dance, or just tell her what he wants. She asks him if he wants a contractual relationship with him, like in the romance novels. And he says that he is disappointed in her if that is the limit of what she could come up with. He says he wants more than just a relationship. He wants her to be his empress. Sana is shocked and embarrassed, but before even listening to her answer, Louis declares that he has chosen her as his empress. Sana is crying and cursing him inside, but then suddenly, a group of assassins enter the hall through the window and throw poisonous smoke bombs to take everyone down. The guards are all dead, and as even Cain falls, Louis clears the smoke around him with his holy sword. But one assassin is holding Sana hostage, and he asks him to surrender his sword if he does not wish to lose his pretty bride. She is disgusted by his words and actions, and she debates if she should use magic to deal with him immediately. But the assassin tells her not to try anything funny, as he knows that she is more than just an ordinary girl. He twists her arm, and as she cries in pain, Louis drops his sword and lets himself get caught by a golden chain, which the assassins say is an ancient artifact used to capture witches and cancel their power. The magic artifact begins draining his power and injuring him, and Sana realizes that the situation is worse than she thought. While everyone is shocked, Barboza smiles, thinking that his plans were going to succeed this time. Louis tells the assassins to let Sana go as he did what they said, and the assassin holding her hostage replies that he has some personal issues with her that he would like to settle by having a little fun. Sana is creeped out, and she can no longer hold herself back from retaliating. But there is no need for that, as Louis uses his power to control his holy sword, Estrada, and kills the assassin holding her and the others. She falls into his arms, and as she is shocked about what he just did, he hugs her and tells her to get a grip as it is not yet over. Sana is trembling as she realizes that they are surrounded by assassins on all sides, and then the emperor coughs and faints before asking her to call him Louis and not Ludwig from now on. The assassins think that it is their chance to finish their job, and Sana has no choice but to rely on her powers and summon lightning to hit her enemies. The assassins are terrified of her powers and cower in fear, and as Sana stops the lightning, she realizes everyone else is also terrified of her. But luckily, she is the witch of pain and can even absorb their mental stress to increase her powers, even though only by a small margin. She asks the assassins if they are ready to rot in jail now, but their leader laughs, saying that she was digging her own grave as he and his comrades killed themselves. Sana feels disgusted, but then suddenly Duke Barboza takes control of the situation, and everyone is relieved that he was there to lead them. He tells the servants to take the emperor and treat him, and then asks the soldiers to take the witch away and burn her at stake. Sana screams that she was the one who saved them all, but then she looks at the people who are all afraid and paranoid, and they agree with the duke to burn her alive. She is furious and says that if they try to get closer to her, she will burn them all before they can get to her, and then suddenly Louis, who has woken up, knocks her out. He furiously tells the people who are speaking ill of Sana to shut up, and as Barboza tries to interfere, Louis tells him that Sana is the empress of the country, and she is to be treated as such. The unconscious girl dreams of her family living happily with her, and as she laughs at seeing them, she realizes that the person she is seeing is not the real her. 
She is Isana, who has taken over her body and her life, and now she wants it back. She is woken up by Leaf, who tells her to look around, as it is not the time to be sleeping. Sana finds herself in a golden cage with more artifacts to restrict her power, and she realizes that it was the handsome trash who knocked her out before she could teach the ungrateful people a lesson. She realizes her situation and is pretty calm about it. And even as Leaf asks her why she had to expose herself in front of everyone, she says that she had no choice. The familiar tells her that she may break the artifacts, but the cage was too strong for her, and he tells her to find an opportunity to escape and then call him, as he will take her out. Sana is grateful and thanks him with a smile, which sends Leaf blushing as he turns into a wolf and jumps out of the window. But then she thinks that Anne and the Count must have known everything, and just as they were getting close, she was separated from them. Then the Emperor comes to see her, and she acts like she is asleep, but he catches her. She gets up and acts aloof as she asks him what he wants now. Sana says that he changes her plan regarding her too quickly, and this made him too fickle to be an emperor. But Lewis clearly tells her one thing. He does not need her love. He only needs her body. Sana flips him off because the idea disgusts her, but then Lewis tells her the story of House Titan. Long ago, the magic dragon ruled the world, and when it was defeated by the first emperor, it cast a curse on him that affected each coming generation. Even after the dragon's body was destroyed, its dark magic took the form of a vortex and threatened to destroy the universe, and the first Titan Emperor took the help of a witch to seal all that magic inside his soul. Ever since then, the sealed dragon vortex has been passed to the Titan descendant with the purest soul, and in this generation, that was Louis. He says that only a select few members of the Imperial family know this, but Sana is not ready to hear anything else, and she laughs at Louis, claiming that he had the purest soul. He is annoyed, but then he continues his story, saying that the seal is weakening with every passing moment, and he feels like the dragon is trying to come out. He reaches out to touch her, saying that, according to the prophecy, only the witch's touch can seal the dragon again but Sana pushes his hand away and says that she will think about whether or not she wants a marriage made in hell. As she plops back onto the floor, figuring out her escape, Louis starts to walk away, declaring that he will destroy the Castilla estate and execute the Count for harboring a witch. And now Sana has no choice but to agree with him. She screams that she will marry him, and he smirks as he shuts the door loudly. But then Sana is even more worried about her family and cries, while outside, the emperor orders the maids to prepare to welcome their new empress. As the maids come in to greet Sana, she is shocked, and realizes that Louis knew she would give in and had prepared everything all along. They take her to get bathed, and as Sana gets surprised by the hot water, the maids tremble and beg for forgiveness. Sana thinks that people can either demand her execution or fear her as a witch, and she will take the second option any day. So she decides to take advantage of that fear by asking the maids to leave her alone for a moment, and then she will be in a good enough mood to forgive them. But when they talk about the emperor's orders, Sana says that she needs to bathe in a virgin's blood to become even more beautiful, and the emperor had given her seven of them. The girls are terrified out of their wits, and they run out and leave her alone to relax. Then, as Sana gets dressed up, she calls Leif, who arrives immediately, startling her, and then says that he was a familiar water element and could use water bodies to teleport himself. He thinks that it was good and they can escape now, but Sana has to tell him everything about the prophecy, her marriage, and the fate of her family. He is shocked to find that she was going to marry the emperor in his master's body and concludes that since they cannot run, they only have one choice, and that is to kill the emperor. But Sana reminds him that then the dragon vortex inside the emperor would release and destroy the entire world. So she had no choice but to marry Louis, and as they are about to get married, 
she thinks that the emperor is not in love with her or Izana. They had already finalized a contract stating that she would help him fix the curse problem and not run away, and in exchange, Louis granted her three conditions. He would not touch her body without her permission. Anne and Leif would be brought to the palace as her personal attendants. And there would be no threat or harm to the Castilla family, as long as she did not run away. And there was a fourth condition, too. The kiss during the wedding should be the lightest peck possible. But as Sana gets ready for it and the priest declares them married, she realizes that there is no kiss at the end of marriage ceremonies in this world. Louis knew this all along, and he pretended to accept her fourth condition, and now she is embarrassed that he made a fool out of her. She curses him inside her mind, but then the ceremony is over, and after four days of becoming the empress, Sana finally gets to see Anne again. But she acts all formal and bows to her. And even Cain kneels before her, greeting her as the empress of the Titan Empire. Sana had not seen him since the coronation, and only occasionally learned that he was recovering at home. But she expected him to be shocked and pained when he saw her like this. Instead, he was happy, and talking about how he heard from Louis about him falling in love at first sight with Sana and reciting many of their lovely stories. Sana says that he must have really been shocked to hear that she was a witch, and he replies that he does not care if she is a witch or a saint. He is still his daughter, and he will give his life for her. He asks her to trust him, that he will always be by her side, and Sana smiles and thanks him, thinking that Isana was a fool to not recognize his love. Then Cain gave her a lot of advice on how to live in the imperial palace, and the most important part was to keep an eye on Duke Barbosa and his family, which was one of the most powerful and richest families in the empire. They were the strongest force in the empire and the only potential threat to the emperor. Cayenne tells Sana that he suspects Barbosa of all the assassination attempts on Louis, and Sana wonders why he was trying to kill the emperor and not get on his good side. But Cayenne tells her not to underestimate the shrewd duke, even if his children were no threat. Meanwhile, Barbosa is interrogating his son Marcel, saying that although he knew he was crazy for some nameless noble lady, he did not know who it was until lately. And as he asks him what his relation is to Empress Sana, Marcel trembles as he tells his story. Barbosa finds it intriguing, and he sends a request for an official audience with the Empress immediately, curious to find out how smart the witch really was. In Sana's residence, Louis is complimenting her on reading a bunch of difficult books in one week, and he says that she really was worthy of being an empress. She is flustered and cringes that he could say such things with a poker face, but then he comes to the main topic and asks her when they are going to share a bedroom and learn more about what the prophecy exactly means. Sana avoids the topic untactfully by referring to a scroll that talks about a disaster that occurs in western regions every three years and causes great losses to the empire. Louis gives up on his agenda and starts telling her more about the sand, storms, and droughts, and the greatest impact was the pollution of drinking water, which caused many people to get sick and die. He had ordered to create a forest in the area, but it would take some time, so Sana suggested an idea to use a simple filter that most people could use. She tells him about purifying water using pebbles, gravel, and sand filters, and then boiling the filtered water. She adds that she will try to find a spell to grow the forest quickly, too, and she thinks that Leif may give her some ideas about water purification spells. She smirks and waits for Louis's reaction, hoping that he will be blown away by her brilliance. And indeed, he smiles at her and thanks her, calling her his empress, and for the first time, Sana's heart flutters from something he did. As he leaves, saying that they will meet for dinner, Sana wonders if she really felt something from Louis's smile, and as she reminds herself of all the cruel things he has done to her, she hardens her heart. But then she learns that Duke Barbosa has requested a royal audience with her, and both Leif and Anne are of the opinion that the Duke cannot be trusted. Sana knows that he probably wants to intimidate her, and she is ready to face him off. But Leif stops her and offers her his body so that she can recharge her powers by tickling him, and she is moved.
The Duke comes to meet her at the Imperial Court, and he was expecting that she would avoid meeting him after he tried to get her executed at the coronation. But she was waiting for him and asked what he wanted to talk about, and after apologizing for what he did earlier, Barbosa told her what he learned from Marcel. Marcel got lost riding his horse one night and ran into Isana, who appeared from a mystic moonlight beam and smiled at him. She told the lost boy that she was in need of a companion anyway, and when he asked her who she was, she told him that she was going to be Sana from now on. Sana is shocked, as she realizes that the original witch was targeting her specifically, and the Duke continues his story. He says that she told Marcel about escaping this world and going to another one where she could be her true self. Seeing her forced poker face, Barbosa smirks and says that it seemed she had failed in going to another world and now had her eyes on the Empire. And he asks her to join forces with him. That way, she could not just be someone's wife, but an empress with all the power in her hands. Sana thinks that even the Duke thought she was still the real witch of this world, like his son. Barbosa says that since his son Marcel had made the grave mistake of capturing her, he deserves to be executed, and he would leave her fate in her hands and asks her to make him her vassal. Sana is so shocked that her heart skips a beat, and then Barbosa says that if it was not enough, he would offer his daughter to her too, as she also crossed her limits at the coronation banquet. She is not only horrified at the man offering his children as sacrifices to protect his standing, but also disgusted at the thought of the two siblings near her. Barbosa asks her if his deal sounded well to her, and while she wants to curse him and throw him out, she needs to act refined and tells him that his proposal was useless. Barbosa is angry, but Sana reminds him that while he was powerful among the nobles, he was just a noble after all. She did not need his pathetic offer to execute whoever she wanted, neither as a witch nor as the empress. She tells him that dogs who bite their masters are put to eternal rest, and after he leaves, she can finally relax. She wonders if she overdid it, but there is no use crying over spilled milk, and she decides to be more dignified the next time. Sana is preparing for a bath, and Leif scolds her for being so ruthless with Barbosa and she tells him not to worry as she was going to talk about it with Louis tonight because they were going to share a bedroom. Leif is shocked and confronts Sana, saying that he will not allow her to do that as this body does not belong to her but to his master. But then he blushes, saying that she does not even love the emperor and that such things should only be done when there is mutual affection. But she is stupefied and shuts him up and then ties him down, leaving him in Anne's care. Sana knows that she cannot drag things out so long, even if it was a marriage of contract. The people had expected her and Louis's love to be the romance of the century, but when they saw them living separately, it was obvious they would think something was amiss. She thinks this is why Barbosa tried to make a deal with her to take over the empire as a figurehead, and now she is getting a headache thinking of all these things as she gets ready for bed. Then she asks the maids to tell the emperor that her door is open, and she thinks that she will make Isana pay for what she did with her body while having fun. But then she is startled when she learns that Louis has already been waiting for her for over an hour, and as she enters the bedroom, she is nervous in anticipation of what might happen. She tells Louis that they might have to act like a real couple, but he is already sound asleep, and she is embarrassed that she got nervous for nothing. She says that he must really be tired from his job to fall asleep like this, and she thinks that he looks sweet while sleeping. But she wishes that his personality could be as nice as his face, and then decides to sleep on the couch and talk about the Duke tomorrow. But as she is going to sleep, Louis wakes up. He is getting into his senses when he hears the sound of Sana falling down, but she has still not woken up. But she wakes up the next morning and is shocked to see that Louis was sleeping with her. Her heart is beating rapidly as she looks at his handsome face and wonders if he moved her from the couch. She says that she does not need his consideration and is about to go away when Louis suddenly holds her and asks her why she keeps avoiding him. He says that he was being understanding and considerate. But now the people and even the Duke were trying to act up, and at this rate, they need to act more like a couple too. Sana is furious, and she headbutts him, asking him not to touch her without her permission. They need to call the royal physician, who tells them that it was a minor bruise that would be okay with a little icing. And while they thank him, 
Sana still looks upset with Louis. He commands the doctor and the maids to leave as he plans to spend the day with his empress alone. And judging by the maids' expressions, Sana can tell that they were thinking that her relationship with her husband was not good. At the breakfast, Sana agrees with Louis, saying that they should pretend to be a real couple. She was still calling him Ludwig, that was his official name. And he asks her to call him Louis, because only his mother used to call him by this nickname. And it was the easiest way to show everyone they were close. Sana accepts and asks him to call him Sana, instead of Isana, saying that it was her real name. But then they get drunk and talk openly with each other as they laugh, and then they get to business, talking about the Duke. Meanwhile, Leaf is listening to their conversation from outside the room, and he is angry. He thinks that the girl was not his real master, but someone in her body, and his only duty was to protect his master's body. But seeing Sana so close to the emperor makes him jealous and upset, and he wonders why he is feeling these emotions. Meanwhile, Sana and Louis threw parties day after day and stayed glued to each other, and eventually the rumors about them not being close dissipated. They complement each other's acting skills, and while Sana says that this was a piece of cake, she is exhausted by the end of the day and tells Louis that if there is another party tomorrow, she will rain fire on the palace. He says that it was unfortunate since he really enjoyed their time together, and as he is talking about future plans with Sana, she falls asleep. As he puts her to bed, he senses something and goes out to find a wolf standing over some dead bodies. Louis realizes that he was Sana's familiar because of his two colored eyes, and he also guesses that he had been taking care of the assassination attempts behind their backs. But Leif is furious at the emperor, and as the latter excuses him, he rushes and grabs his throat, telling him not to dare touch Sana. He tells Louis that if he touches her, he will kill him, and the furious emperor summons his holy sword. Leif says he feels no holy power from his sword, but Louis uses his powers and sends his crashing to the floor but using them also weakens the seal on the dragon's power. Disturbed by the commotion, Sana has woken up, and she angrily comes outside to ask what is happening. Leif is coughing blood, and the worried Sana goes to check on him before asking Louis how he could do this to her obedient dog. She asks him if he has forgotten their contract that he will not harm the Castilla family, but then she notices that he is also trembling from pain, and then the ground and walls around him start to crack. Now Sana is worried about him and drops Leif as she rushes to his side and holds him while wondering what was going on. She realizes it was the dragon's power and asks Louis to wake up and control it or they will die, and he asks her to touch him to contain it. She does not know what the prophecy even means, but Louis is groaning in pain, and he says that he cannot hold out any longer. He begs Sana to help him, and she hugs him, trying to figure out what the prophecy meant by the witch's touch. She wonders if it refers to a kiss like in most fairy tales, and even though she is nervous, she decides to give her first kiss to Louis to save the world. But Leif stops her at the last moment, and she is so flustered that she cannot do it anymore and instead slaps Louis away. And then suddenly, a golden magic circle appears beneath them, and then a bright pillar of light is released. Sana is unconscious, and as she is in her bed, both Louis and Leif are tending to her and the former tells the servants to go away. She wakes up with a headache, and the two men are being pushy and annoying, and they even start to fight with each other. She shuts them up and tells them to get their act together and get her some water. As she drinks water, Louis tells her that it was the right choice to slap him, and she spits it out, asking if it really worked. Louis affirms, saying that her slap transformed his holy sword Estrada, but it was not a complete cure, but only a makeshift arrangement. Sana asks him if she should slap him again, and he cannot refuse. So she says that she will charge her powers by tickling Leif and then slap Louis, and as she gets happy about it, she realizes that she was sounding like a pervert. While Sana is agonizing over her pervert status, in the western part of the empire, Barbosa's eldest son Edmund is taking away the filtration system designed by Sana from the people, who beg him not to do it but he is not in the mood to listen and burns the filters while beating the people for raising their voices and not paying their taxes. He tells his servants to raise the taxes ten times, and then he goes back to his carriage, thinking that his father did not need to send him here when servants could do this work. Barbosa had a problem with the empress, and he tried to get the nobles to his side and throw her out, 
but he failed because they are afraid of the witch's powers. As he is complaining that he has to do the dirty work, Marcel tells him that they have destroyed all the filtration devices, and then starts talking about how amazing Sana was if she could create such a useful thing from rocks and sand. Barbosa's plan was to bring her here after they destroyed the filters, and Marcel is really excited to see her again. He thinks that the last time he made a mistake, he asked her for marriage, but this time he will tie her to his bed and never let her go. Meanwhile, Sana is in the library, trying to find anything that can help her recharge her power without torturing Lewis and Leif, and she finds nothing. But then the emperor says that since the cursed seal was fine now, they should take care of the other problem, and he gives her a scroll saying that the filtration method was very effective, but since the people could not pay the taxes, the barrels were burned. She is furious, and as Lewis tells her that it was because of the duke's eldest son, she says that she is going to the western region right away and will solve this problem with or without magic. While Lewis and Leif try to dissuade her, she says that she was the empress and it was her empire, so she has to go, and when the former asks her if she is really sure to go there despite the danger, she answers that there is no one more dangerous than her in the entire country. Louis is impressed by her answer and says that he will open a secret passage that will take Sana to the western region quickly. He opens a hidden door on his bookshelf, and as they go down the stairs, there is a lunar henge altar there that could be used as a witch's transporter. He says that these were relics from the time when the Empire partnered with the witches, and while the open-air henges were all destroyed, this was still in working condition. Only witches could use them, but it would take her anywhere in one second, and he asks Sana if she is confident enough to do it. Sana is thinking that this must give her some clues to what Izana did, and she immediately agrees. Louis takes her to the center of the henge and tells her to take position and read the words on the stones, and while the language was foreign to her, her body remembered everything she needed to do. She thanks Louis, and then he suddenly kisses her forehead as he sends her off and tells her to come back soon as she will be waiting. She is flustered and tells him she will beat him for kissing her without permission when she returns, and then disappears. But Louis cannot stop blushing after she is gone and decides to go back to his office. Meanwhile, Sana has teleported to the western region, but she is high up in the air and falls down on something cushiony, thinking that it was a haystack. But when she looks down, she is shocked to see that she has landed upon Marcel, who is knocked out under her. She wonders what this pervert was doing here and wants to run away before he wakes, but then she stops herself, as she was not here to run but to ruin the Barbosa family, and she starts laughing maniacally. Marcel starts running away, saying that this was all his brother's fault, and Sana chases after him, saying that she does not care and will punish him for putting the villagers' lives in danger. But she cannot catch up to him and does not want to use her magic either, so she decides to use her hidden weapon, which was a whip given to her by Anne. Sana hits Marcel, who seems to be enjoying the pain, and even she feels good as she recharges her magic with it. Marcel is complaining about how she could do this to him on the day of their reunion, and she is irritated and rips off his clothes, telling him he will lose whatever he has on his body if he tries to irritate her again. She threatens him to answer her questions, and Marcel tells her that he and his brother burned every filtration system, and also his brother Edmund had dragged every young and beautiful boy to his mansion because he preferred boys. Sana is grossed out on imagining it, and as Marcel says that he only has eyes for her, she whips him before seeing that the life for people here was really not easy. She is furious at the Barbosa family, but uses her magic to bring rain so that the people can get some water in the meantime. But that was only a temporary solution, and she thinks that there is a lot of work to be done here. And the first thing she needs to do is recharge her magic, and she orders Marcel to take her to his brother. Edmund is making girls and boys dance for his entertainment, but when he is not pleased, he orders them to be sold to the slave market. As he tells them that they should be grateful for being left alive, he hears the sound of doors slamming, whips cracking, and soldiers screaming. A knight comes in to inform him that they were under attack, but one whip from Sana destroys his armor and clothes, and Edmund gets red from embarrassment. Sana has realized that Anne gave her this whip because it has ingrained a bit of magic power after repeated use, 
and is quite helpful in ripping clothes. The soldiers she hits are embarrassed and run away, and she feels her magic overflowing as she reaches Edmund's room and tells him to get on his knees if he wants to save his dignity. He was terrified, and she conquered the whole fortress in moments, and the servants and the people brought here forcefully thanked her as a brave knight, not even knowing the name and the face of their empress. She wanted to hide her identity anyway, so she said that she was a knight from the very strong duchy, which was much stronger than Duke Barbosa's estate, and was going to protect them all. The naive people bought her lies and flattered her, saying that she was extremely skilled with the whip. She thinks they will not hate her for being a witch when she just saved their lives, but then she thinks that no one should hate a witch so much now that a witch is the empress. But the people know nothing about that, and Sana decides to show them some magic, saying she learned it from the empress. The villagers were initially suspicious, but in just three days she got them to her side. She whipped the two idiot brothers to recharge her powers, and then made it rain in front of the villagers, and cracked boulders with lightning to create pebbles for the new filtration system. She also called Leaf to help her grow trees faster, but he explained that the source of their magic was their hearts, so they needed to get close to increase the effect of the complex spells, and Sana asked him to get even closer. As they do that, Leif's heart starts beating fast, and he mumbles to himself that he has now stopped seeing his master when he sees that face. The growth magic is successful, and while others are celebrating, Sana is tired but happy, and she thanks Leif for teaching her this spell. Then she thinks that they need someone to look after the forest and make more filtration systems while improving the image of witches amongst the masses. She also wants to find a way to stop the Duke from taking revenge, and she is going to leave everything up to Louis. Leif laughs, saying that it was right to make the emperor work to his bones, and then Sana says they need to accomplish their final goal now. At night, she goes to a lunar stone henge with her familiar, and he asks her if she is planning to go back to the palace now. He says that she could rest tonight and do it tomorrow, but Sana has to do it tonight under the full moonlight, like she heard from the duke. She is not planning to go back to the palace, rather she wants to go back to her world, as she has accomplished everything she can do here, and also knows the way to return. Leif is shocked, and asks her what she is talking about, and Sana gives him some farewell letters she has written to everyone. She tells him to relay her message to Isana, that if she tries this again, she will hunt her down. Leif is worried as he says that she does not know the spell his master used and she tells him that she can read the inscriptions on the henge and already knows the spell through her body. He still wants to stop her, saying that it was too dangerous and even a small mistake could destroy her soul, but Sana is determined that she can do it, and she does not want to get more involved in this world than she already is. She fears that she will change her mind if she returns to the palace, as that would make it harder for her to leave when she sees Louis. But Leif holds her hand, saying that she was much different from Izana, and being with her and bantering around had changed him. He tells her that he no longer sees his master when he sees her because he is in love with her, and Sana is stunned on learning this. She cannot believe it. So Leif repeats his confession again and again until she is flustered and says that he has lost his mind. He says that he might actually have lost his mind to fall in love with a woman whose face he has never seen, but then the stone henge starts glowing and he asks her if she initiated the spell. Sana has done nothing, and then a bright red flash hits the henge, and the energy goes straight to the palace. She and Leif are both shocked as the energy subsides, and they find that the henge was completely destroyed, and she assures him that she did nothing. And Leif can only conclude one thing from it. There was another witch in this world who could use a spell powerful enough to destroy a henge. Leif carries Sana with her to the palace on his back, saying that there was another lunar henge in the palace, and he felt the energy going towards it. And that was not all. It was only for a moment, but the cold and bold energy told Leif that it was his master's power. Sana is shocked to learn that the original Isana did that, and on top of that, she was in the palace. Meanwhile, a few minutes before the mysterious red energy struck, Louis was waiting impatiently for Sana to return. It was his routine to go to the Lunar Henge to see if she had returned, but she had not. Anne was acting as her decoy for the past three days, and by being away from her for this little period, Louis regretted sending her away in the first place. 
he has finally realized that his life would be empty without her sparkling existence. He is afraid that she will leave him at any moment, and he touches the henge as he wishes for her to return to him. And at that exact moment the red light strikes the henge, and from that comes the real witch in Sana's body. The henge collapses, and Louis shields her, but then he wonders who this strange young woman is. The next day he orders Anne to keep the existence of the new girl a secret, and to cover for Sana's extended delay, he asks her to say that she was visiting her family estate. Louis wonders how the woman came through the henge, and since he suspects that she might be a witch too, he asks Anne to put the artifact cuffs on her so that she does not harm anyone and plans to interrogate her later. The next day, Isana woke up, and Anne tried to interrogate her, and the witch smiled, saying that she knew Anne would not be able to recognize her. She said that she was Isana Castilla, and Anne could not believe it. Isana was born after four miscarriages, as her mother had asked a witch to perform a spell to prevent a miscarriage by stopping the child's soul from leaving the body. But it disturbed the dimensions, and accidentally, the soul of another child born at the same time entered her body. This was the reason why she was frail and weak, and on hearing that, the countess got so hurt that she ordered the witch to be captured and burned alive. The witch still told her that there was a solution to this problem. Through her true love for the child, the new soul could settle properly in her body. But the witch was executed nonetheless, and the young Isana heard her words, which left a deep impression on her. She wanted her parents to love her, but they did not, and even though they gave her a fancy lifestyle, they did not give her any love, and that made her health even worse. But when she met Cain, who was her family too, she thought that he might love and cure her, and she did not need her parents anymore. They died in the fire, but even after Cain adopted her, she did not get significantly better because he had to leave for the border to fight, and she was all alone again. So she became what she was before disappearing. She read ancient texts, summoned an obedient familiar, gained magic power from the gems, and tortured the servants. But she thought that it was all meaningless. The only thing she wanted was to leave this place for the world she belonged to. As her health worsened, she thought of the witch's dying words and how her mother refused to believe them, and she furiously trashed her room. As Anne told her to rest, she ordered her to go and gather power for her, and Leif could tell that the poor girl was not brave enough to do that, yet she was so loyal to Isana that she could not disobey. Even Leif was a boring creature to her, and as she dismissed him, she read the last of the ancient records she had, and surprisingly she found her answer there. She learned the spell to create a door to another dimension, and using the blood of a dog she created a window through which she saw the body and the world she was supposed to be born in. She was amazed, but more than the world, what tempted her to go there was Sana's loving family, whom she was jealous of. At present Anne is terrified of what she just heard the woman say about the private matters between her and Isana. She was cold to her, saying that she only kept her around despite her incompetence because she was sensible, and it seemed she was a disappointment too. Anne could not mistake that cold and oppressive personality for anything else. And as she accepted her as her true master, she wondered who the woman she spent the past few months with was. And Izana tells her that she was fooled by the girl who was an evil witch who stole her body. Anne told Isana everything about how Sana became an empress despite showing her powers in public, and it did not surprise Isana even one bit, as she already expected this to happen. She got Anne completely under her command and asked her to take away the artifacts to the emperor and bring him to her. As Anne rushes to get him, she is confused because she cannot believe that Sana was an evil witch, but the woman in the room was her real master. She trips and falls down, and then starts crying and wishing for the empress to return, determined to serve and trick Isana until she comes back. A few days later, Sana and Leif return to the palace, and as he jumps over the wall, the familiar cries out in pain after being stung by hundreds of thorns. It was then that Sana noticed that the entire palace was covered in thorny wines, and as she takes care of Leif, he says that he is sure that this is his master's magic. Leif cannot move as the thorns were slightly poisonous. And since Sana is worried about Louis and Anne, she decides to go in by herself. Leif tries to stop her, but she puts her fingers on her mouth and says this was her command as his master. And he blushes, 
as she tells him to return to the Castilla mansion as soon as he recovers, so that he can protect the Count and ask for his help if needed. Leif's face is red as he says that she was trying to take advantage of the fact that she liked her, and now Sana is also awkward as she tell him to just follow his orders, promising that she would be right back. He believes her, and she tells him that Izana is not the only one with magic, as she uses her power to clear the vines around the palace. As Sana goes to the palace after the vines have cleared, her mind is full of questions about the motives of Isana, and if it is possible for her to get her body and return to her world. Meanwhile, Isana is watching her charge straight to the palace using her magic mirror, and she wonders if this fearless nature made the emperor fall in love with her. Louis was knocked out in a coffin right now, and Anne asks Isana what she planned to do with him, and she is worried that he is not up yet because she hit him too hard. But Isana tells her that people don't die that easily, even though it is not difficult to break them. She asks her servant if she remembered the puppy named Mary she once raised, and Anne remembers the puppy that her master really loved but could not find it ever since she disappeared. Isana tells her that magic requires sacrifice, and now she wants to see if Sana can show her that she is different from her and why she receives so much love everywhere she goes. Meanwhile, Sana is hurrying to her room in the palace, but it is covered with vines all the way through, and she wonders what the witch is thinking. But then she comes to a door which is blocked, and now she is frustrated as she thinks that she will have to waste her power and burn the entire thing away. But there are people stuck in the vines, and among them, Duke Barbosa requests that she hold back. She pokes his head as he tries to bargain with her and offers information if she helps him, but there are other soldiers there who give the information without asking anything. Sana frees them as she thanks them and then orders them to rush to Count Castilla and then follow his orders to rescue the emperor. And before leaving, she tells Barbosa that if he tries anything funny, she will ruin his family. He accepts her order, and as she whips open the door, Isana sees everything and thinks that she did it again. She had been watching Sana from the other world and found that she got everything Isana ever wanted using unique methods. She got the love of a family, her attendants, and even the love of the emperor. Isana is furious that she did this all with her body, and she hates Sana to the end of the world. While she is staring angrily at the mirror, Anne takes her chance and frees the emperor from the artifacts, and he is awake now. Isana screams. That why can Sana do it but not her, and she smashes her magic mirror on the ground. But then she finds Louis holding his holy sword at her throat, telling her that it was enough of her childish tantrum. He calls her Lady Castilla and asks her if she lived her whole life dissatisfied and whining about everything. Isana tries to play some mind games and goes to hug Louis, who shoves her down, and she tells him to be careful as this body belongs to the woman he loves. Isana then laughs at him, calling him childish to pick a fight with an enemy he cannot kill as she attacks him with magic. Meanwhile, Sana has encountered her greatest obstacle in the form of the stairs, and she climbs the stairs to conserve her magic, and then collapses as she reaches the door of the throne room, promising herself that she will install elevators in the palace before leaving. She gets up, and as she is about to whip the door open, a bunch of vines break it and rush outside. Sana is stunned for a moment, and then, as she looks back, she finds Louis was caught up in those vines. They both see each other, and Louis tells her to run as the witch was after her. But before Sana can say anything, he is blown away, and as she is cursing the situation, she hears Anne's scream from inside the room. Isana was strangling her for betraying her, and Sana kicks her in the head, asking her if she was insane to do that with her body. She helps Anne, who is glad to see the Empress back, but now the real witch is even more furious. She remembers Sana's family recognizing that she was not their daughter and lashes out at her, asking what was the difference between them that made everyone love only her. 
Sana is not having any of her tantrums and tells her to shut up and fight, as words don't work with people like her anyway. Isana summons vines and Sana cancels them with her magic, and then, as the fight between the two witches continues, none of them knew it would become a major historical event for the Empire. The battle rages on as Kane and Leaf stand outside the crumbling palace, and the latter has evacuated everyone. But inside the palace, Sana does not think that it was a battle of witches, and it was more like a cat fight. As soon as both of them exhaust their power, they rush at each other and pull their enemy's hair. Isana says that she is going to turn her bald and then no one will like her. And as Sana tells her that no one likes her even with beautiful hair, the two women fight like crazy people until sunset. And at the end of the day, when Louis came looking for her, Sana was the one who stood victorious. The fight was painful, but in the end, she managed to pull out the hairs of her own body and defeated Isana using her knowledge of martial arts. The fight was over, and Sana stumbled as she walked away. But Louis caught her. Seeing him so worried, she told him that she was about to come and rescue her, but then thanked him for rescuing her instead, and he lifts her and takes her out to rest. While the palace was being repaired, Sana went back to the Castilla mansion to heal and rest, and Lua followed her to take care of her. They talk about the incident and how the emperor was neglecting his duties because of her. And then he tells her that Isana was awake and asks her if she wants to see her. She is ready and wants to have a real conversation with her. She goes to the palace, and Leif is worried that meeting her would not be a wise move. She asks him if he was feeling guilty about betraying his master, and then tells him to forget about it as she is her master now, and he readily acknowledges that as the truth and asks her to be careful. She then goes to meet Isana, who is in the prison room, and both girls claim to know what the other wants. Isana says that Sana wants her body back, and she replies that she does not want it until her hair grows back. But Sana admits that she wants her body, and then she will return to her world. And Isana smiles as she asks her to guarantee her safety, identity, and everything related in exchange for teaching her all the spells. She wants their transaction to be kept a secret from Cain so that this time she can get his genuine love and settle into her body. Sana seems to agree and asks Isana if she did anything to her family, but she assures her that she did not harm them and just told them that she was going on a trip. Then she tells her to treat her according to her status and call some attendants for her before she makes greater demands. Sana orders Anne to lay out a feast and then relishes it, with Isana still in the cage, complaining about being let out. But she tells her that she was forgetting who was in charge here, while teasing her. Sana says that she must understand who has the power here, and asks her to tell her everything while she is being nice. Isana gives up and tells her that she needs two spells to accomplish her goal. The first one was using the lunar henges to transport not just the soul, but the body. But the problem is that Earth does not have any lunar hinges, and Isana has used up all the hinges in this world. Sana decides to feed her grasshoppers for dinner, and Isana immediately tells her that with her knowledge and Leaf's help, they can rebuild them quickly. But the problem was the second spell to switch the souls, as it required a sacrifice. And it was not just someone's pain. It had to be the pain and blood of someone she loved and Isana asks Sana to choose who she wants to sacrifice wisely. She is shocked and furious and runs out of the room, thinking that it was pointless and unjustified, no matter how much she wanted to go back to her world. She starts crying as she reaches the fountain, blaming herself because when Isana asked her to choose someone who loved her and would sacrifice everything for her, she instinctively thought of someone, and then she summons Leif out of the fountain. Moments before this happened, as Sana ran out of the room, Anne went in, as she had heard everything. Isana bashes her, asking how dare she show her face after betraying her, but Anne asks her if she sacrificed the puppy named Mary. Isana affirms, saying that the dog was the one who loved her the most, and Anne replies that she, Leif, or the Count, or anyone else, would have agreed to help her if she had asked them and trusted them. 
She tells her lady that she does not know what she wants and is just confused. She had everything she could ask for and voluntarily threw it away. Anne says that she no longer serves her, but she truly wishes her happiness. And as the girl bows down and thanks her for everything, she cries because this could be their last meeting. But Isana is furious and tells her to get out of her sight, saying that her empress also went out to find someone to sacrifice, and she was no different from her. But as Annie silently leaves the room, even the witch tears up a bit. Meanwhile, Sana is asking Leaf to do her a favor that would not be easy, and as he asks if she finally plans to kill the emperor, she laughs, saying that was not it. She tells him to find something to cover Isana's head, and then he tells her that he does not want her to go back, but if she wants that, he will support her. Sana smiles at that and thinks that she was being foolish when she thought she could ask him to give up his life for her, and she can no longer do that. She kisses him and thanks him, and then decides not to tell Anne or Cain, because she fears they will sacrifice themselves for her. Sana grows even more uncertain about the decision, and that night, under the influence of alcohol, she ends up telling everything to Louis. She cries as she tells him everything, thinking that he was someone who put her in prison and would not sacrifice for herself as he had to run the country. So she thought it was safe to tell him and that she would get someone to lean on. Louis comforts her and tells her to start building the henge as he would be her sacrifice. She is shocked and scolded him, but he has yet to finish his sentence and said, there was a way to do it without anyone dying. He tells her that the blood had to be equal to one person's sacrifice, but it didn't have to be just one person's blood, and Sana finally sees a ray of hope as she calls Louis a genius. She thanks him and says that she will do anything he asks for, and Louis kisses her hands as he says that the only thing he wants is for her to remember him forever. And then he tells her very sincerely that he wants to dedicate his first to her. Sana was stunned as she wondered what was the first he was talking about was, and he replied that he wanted to give her everything. He gets up to kiss her and Sana trembles as she barely stops herself from hitting him. Louis complains that he was waiting patiently for her to grow affectionate toward him, but if she does not desire it, he will withdraw. She is confused about what to do and thinks that she is crazy because she really wants to kiss him. She gives in to her desires, and is about to kiss him when she shuts his mouth with her hands and asks him if she was her first kiss, and he affirms. She wants to tease him and says that she will only kiss if he is a pro who can tie a knot in a cherry stem with his tongue, and Louis does it easily, reminding her that he is a genius. He tells her that he will be better than her familiar anyway, and Sana is flustered as she asks him if he would kiss her even after seeing her kiss Leaf. Louis says that even if she likes someone else, he loves her and wants to keep her here, even using force. But he knows she will not like it and hate him. So he wants her to remember their kiss forever. As Louis kissed her, Sana wondered if she would have such a cringy but wonderful moment in her life after this. She made an excuse that she needed some space for herself but all she can think of is her kissing two men for the first time in one day. She thinks it was fine, as she would have to say goodbye anyway, but then she begins to debate what she really wants with herself. She finally gathers her thoughts and decides to start preparing to go home. She thinks that she will have fun with everyone here in the time she has left. As Sana fell asleep, she dreams of being back in her world, living an ordinary life with her family. She is happy and grows attached to her original world in the dream, but often wonders how the people in the other world were doing. Sana did not know why she felt like going back to that world, but she bid her farewell to her family while creeing her eyes out and decided to stay here. Meanwhile, Isana was also crying in her cage, saying that she does not want anything in this world that does not have Wi-Fi and ramen, she cries that if she is given a second chance, she can do better, and then suddenly Sana appears behind her, asking if she meant it. Isana is startled, but Sana is here for business. 
She tells her that she could be a person worth loving if she tried, and she promises to make her a proud Korean by the time her hair grew back, swearing it on her grandfather's honor. She taught her all the necessary etiquette and ethics to adjust to Korea. It was not easy, especially for the arrogant Isana, but she worked hard and did well in all her lessons. Then, with the help of Leif, Sana was able to make new lunar henges, and he asked her if she was sure that she did not want to return to her world, and says that she is confident. Then finally, the day of truth comes, and both Sana and Isana have decided to live in the world they were not raised in. But Isana says that this was how it was supposed to be, and now they are going to live in the worlds they were supposed to be born into. She says that the fact they were both healthy in their bodies was the proof. But Sana differs from her, saying that the true love that bonded the soul with the body was not only the love they had to receive, but also the love they had to give. She says the fact that Isana was healthy in her new body was proof that she loved Sana's family in the other world to the best of her abilities, and she knows that she misses them. Sana feels a little jealous of her and thinks that Isana also feels the same, and they exchange mirrors to stay in touch with each other. They bid each other goodbye and simultaneously tell each other not to misuse their bodies, then burst out into laughter. Then, with mixed feelings in her heart, Sana sent her off, sure that she would not regret it but only miss her family. She cries, but then one by one, Louis, Leaf, and Anne come to hug her and they are the reasons why she fell in love with this world and decided to stay here. A few years passed since this farewell, and Sana ruled the Titanic Empire as its empress, who was granted equal powers to the emperor. This was supposed to be the power balance of the rulers, but the majority of power was always given to the emperor, and because of this, Louis lost his mother to an assassination shortly after she was crowned the Empress. To prevent such things from happening to future generations and to show that an equal sharing of power was possible, Louis and Sana are trying their best to work as equal partners. One day, as Sana is doing her work and does not listen to Louis's suggestion to rest, he decides to work together with his enemy for a mutual goal and calls in Leif. He comes in, carrying two kids and complaining that he can no longer look after them as their stamina rivals the devil himself, and the two girls giggle. The imperial couple is a bit taken aback, and as the two girls, Luna and Rona, run to their mother, she asks them if they were riding on leaf the whole day. They tell her that they ran around the palace many times and then show that they have gotten good enough at magic to fly. Sana laughs saying that if they did not have magic, she could ask anyone besides Leif to look after them. And as she wonders who they take after, both Louis and Leif say that she is the one. She laughs and then suddenly feels weak and stumbles. And Louis catches her as she takes up his offer to rest and decides to go to the Castilla estate. Louis has to complete the office work for her, and that leaves Leif in charge of babysitting again, and he does not want it. Sana goes to Kane's residence, who is now a duke, and takes measures to keep Barbosa in check. She talks to him about her plans to build a witch's tower, where she plans to train new witches, and it would one day be useful for her daughters too. Kane also thinks that it was a good idea that could help the Empire, and as they talk about the plane, Sana thinks that she is too happy here. This world was not perfect, and she often felt strange when she received news of her home through the mirror. But she was so happy to be here and does not regret her decision even a bit. And neither does Cain regret his decision to protect his niece. And as he thinks about her mother, he says that he does not resent her decision either. With this, the video ends, but the story of Sana as a witch in another world is not over yet. She is going to face more challenges now that she has more witches in her family and is preparing to train many more. On top of that, even Isana is living her life in another world, and she may have an interesting story too. Wait for part two of the video to find out what happens to Sana in the future 
and how the Witch Empress deals with it. Till then, subscribe to our channel and check out more videos if you haven't already done that, and leave a like and comment if you found this video enjoyable.